Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we are continuing to work on the Alta locomotive. So I've been getting some ideas from my Discord server about things to proceed on. I have some of my own ideas and I want to start to develop a trailer or a car that I then put on logic and see how the logic can be transferred from locomotive to cars and to other locomotives that are in slave mode to the main locomotive that we are controlling. So. Without further ado, let's begin. User Susboy on my Discord server sent me an XML of a locomotive throttle. And you can see it uses a very clean interface here to throttle up and throttle down. And then when you're at zero throttle, then you could actually turn your reverser on and throttle up in reverse, throttle down and change it up again here. So a clean system that I do like. However, I do want to simplify this setup while keeping it with the levers for the reason that I like how they look when you throttle them up and down with your seat. It gives you a good amount of control and it gives a fair bit of, let's call it realism as far as this can be realistic. Um, but what I don't really like in this setup is the reverser throttle. I know it's realistic and trains have that setup, but what I'm going to prefer to do here instead of a full instead of a reverser throttle that's going to be applied i want to just have a simple reverse button so you press reverse and it goes in reverse you turn off reverse it goes straight so it'll be using this previous setup that i have but instead of this throttle reverse and this nice um function that i've added here really it's just gonna take this and throw it into a numerical switch box where we have our forward throttle if it is off and if it is on meaning if reverse is on it'll just be a negative function so very simple and the idea is that it cleans up the setup that i have on the dashboard of the locomotive so in this case now it's going through through to this numerical switch box in reverse so now instead of this reverse throttle what I now have to do is change it to be a on off input and just call it reverse. So in that case, when it's toggled, then you are going in reverse. So this will actually free up some space here. I can remove that reverse throttle. And the nice part is I'm actually planning on putting buttons, instrument panel buttons that can operate some functions of the locomotive here. So having placed the buttons here, we're just going to convert them quickly to buttons, but I want to see what buttons I want here. And that's going to determine the arrangement of the microcontroller for the locomotive. So for sure, what we know is one of these has to be the reverse. Now the reverse one might be better to be a little lower, a little closer to the control panel, I think, or to where we're kind of sitting, even if it's the bottom left right here. That may be the best place so i'm just going to put a arrow button turn it down and that will be a toggle so this is number four and this is our reverse so you press that you're now going in reverse based on the throttle that you've set on that middle one here now the brake can remain here but one thing that people have told me is that trains have the ability to break either just the locomotive or break the whole train and everything that it is pulling. So I do want this one to be the, the only break, but there will be a button here that will switch whether we are breaking the full train or whether we're breaking just the locomotive. So in my research, I've determined that it's called automatic braking and independent braking. So now with this being set, this determines our braking mode independent is off automatic is on and then here it lets us break either independently or automatic for the train this is our throttle now these up here are going to set some of the lights and stuff like that this emergency brake also may or may not fly i just need to kind of determine whether i want to put it up here but i guess having it down there does make sense on a practical sense you hit that button and the whole thing's coming to a halt it doesn't really um, need to be on this little dashboard here. This area I consider more like the, uh, what I have in my vehicles where you could kind of, or my ships even, where you could turn on various systems and things there, including the, the displays and whatever we may have. 
One complication I foresee is when there's multiple locomotives paired up, do I want the lights to be forced off and not be able to light up the various headlights and taillights and such? Because right now they're all on this little control panel here, with the exception of these rear spotlights or rear lights that are going to work on a different setup. They're going to be engaged when you're in reverse. So they're going to act almost as our reverse lights. But the problem with acting as reverse lights is the fact that if we are reversing a whole massive train, I don't want to have every single locomotive in this train light up these lights. So that's going to be something we'll have to look into. Also, I'm not sure and not going to follow the actual convention of trains. Of course, they have a convention with where the lights have to be, the different colors, all that good stuff. For this, I'm probably just going to have what I envision is an Ulta standard, meaning <laughs> it's just going to be a fictional kind of setup. So for me, if the locomotive is on, these two are just going to glow red sort of as taillights. And then these are our rear spotlights if we are backing up. And that's going to facilitate the little camera that I have there. So that should be an okay system for what I envisioned here. Of course, um, realism not being the key here, but rather functionality and um, ease of use for everybody. So that's kind of my key thing here. I did also add here two switches, one for the heater and one for this RGB light that's actually switchable and you can end up selecting of various different um, lighting configurations for your locomotive cab if you want to ride in a certain color without it being sort of too distracting for you as you go. In the cabin now, if I toggle this, you get a variety of different light options. Then we can turn our heater on. The walkway lights are now illuminating the exterior of the train. And lastly, the wheel lights are going to be down there, kind of creating a glow. So depending on what you're trying to look at and inspect, now you have a system for that. Those ones I'm not going to disable based on if the train is the primary or if it is in slave mode. I'm just going to leave that. Really, it's going to come down to a couple of the lights, specifically these backing up lights, to not have everything turn on. Um, but that maybe it'll actually be okay. Right now, my setup has it such that when we press this button here, it turns on those lights. Whereas when the train is paired up with a primary locomotive, we won't be pressing that physical button. We're rather just going to communicate directly with the wheels. So I may be able to over bypass that entire setup. And we'll see that once we start to make the microcontroller for that. The next thing I want to do is have my main display that I worked a lot of R&D hours on for the main kind of dashboard here. And we're going to start off by using a basis of our OMA display except I'm obviously going to change it to be Ulta. And in addition to that, we're going to have to do some revamping of the systems here. But primarily, if we look at where the Lua script is, we're using our um, fuel, which is good. We want that. And then in here, now we have our RPS, our fuel, our battery temperature. We got our heading. And then we have knots. So here we actually need to have kilometers per hour. And based on the kilometers per hour speed being fed in through here, I have to go and adjust the function that will make sure that my linear speed is in kilometers. So currently we're using 1.9. Now we're going to put it to 3.6. So in that case, now we're getting a good um, ability to set that speed. So the colors obviously may not be what we want here as our final Ulta. And also I've not really decided on what the brand of this locomotive is. Again, the, the operator is Ulta, just like how Ulta uses the buckle trucks. So in this case, I'm debating when we'll see what we end up with here. I got it all loaded up. 
We're going to start the train up and you will now see the brand of the train. So I had between GTC and RAT. I decided to go with GTC. It's time to give that brand some loving. So you can see the generator is ramping up. The fuel is there. And now we can see our speed and all that good stuff. Now if I press this button, it actually does go into map mode. So that is intentional. We now have an ability to have a map. So that's always nice. Now back here we can see our speed is climbing. I do want to get a little bit more speed out of the locomotive. So that is kind of my intention to do this. But you can see this little display gives us a good range of information that we need as we are controlling the train. So I'm quite happy with how this turned out. I think this will serve perfectly for the intention of um, this Alta train. Of course on this seat with these two displays I actually have something else planned here but I'm not going to reveal that just yet. So you can see we've hit 100 kilometers an hour that's without any loading. It would it would be very nice to hit 100 with loading, so we'll see if that's possible. The current generator system we have is 5-cylinder. There were some users on YouTube that told me that I could use a 4-cylinder and get more wattage if I use a um, gearbox pointed into the engine with a ratio of 3 to 1. If I set a four-cylinder engine to have a three to one ratio gearing it does not give me the right amount of power coming out of my generator this right now is a four-cylinder engine at two to one ratio with a large generator and we're getting 1100 so i'm not quite sure where that value of how, how the value of 2000 was reached with having a four cylinder engine and the gearing here to three to one. If I set a four to three to one, it gets me around 600. So maybe my modular engine microcontroller isn't right, but I'm getting a good efficiency. I'm getting like 95 and I'm having the right uh, ratio and everything. So a little bit strange. If you do read this and uh, have a comment based on your experience with a four cylinder getting 2000 um, watts charging out of this I would love to see it but until then we're sticking with the five the five cylinder that is so I'm just going to go ahead and put the five cylinder back here before starting on the next part of our journey and this here has to be brought back to five to two so five to two with our five cylinder engine is getting now as you can see here so we're getting 1200 with our four five cylinder engine and this is keeping the train properly charged up so this is a very blunt microcontroller bringing in the value of the throttle outputting it to our motors and if it is slipping then we are not going to have anything we're gonna have zero at first and then we'll see if maybe 50 percent throttle is better so for the moment of truth as I give it power here. It seems to be picking up speed, which is obviously good. And this happened here. So it's like flick, turning on and off, turning on and off. And it's dropping the speed down. So this system isn't really working here. With my current engine setup, I have 5 to 2. So it gives us this 2.5 range. But I wanted to do a look and see if we can do a little bit more to reduce the RPS and potentially end up with something better. So the next one is 3 and that's too much. So here we have 2.7 and you can see it's having a 3 to 2 and having a 9 to 5 gear. In here I put the two gears and I had to do a little bit of reconfiguration just temporarily but when I ran this locomotive it was only getting us up to 1100 on the generator and that was not nearly enough to keep it fully charged I had to turn on infinite electric otherwise this was not able to keep up so we have to drop this 
and revert back to the one that I previously had, which was just the single gear with a 5 to 2 ratio. And this gives us that sort of 1200, 1300 range, and it lets us tow the trailer. So I've looked into reducing the generator cylinders, I looked into reducing the gearing, I tried using a numerical switch box instead of the clamp. The other thing that was recommended was to try to put a gearbox for these generators here to change the gearing on the wheels. So I do have four motors per axle, but really only one of them is doing the work, or one or two motors are doing the work, both in the front and back. So in this case, I can now apply that logic and put a gearbox here. Now I found out when I put it to the maximum amount, we actually decreased our top speed, so now we're at 51. And that gives me a pretty good conclusion. If I go here and take a look, you can see that I put three to one facing this direction. So now I can flip them over the other way and I'll do that to both. And once they're flipped, we can run the same test again and see what happens. So make sure that it's paired up in both cases. Now again, this is 3 to 1 facing the other direction, so I'm very curious as to what will happen. In the previous case, it just uh, made it much, much slower. So now, if I give this power and throttle, we'll see if we get any slippage of the wheels or if we're just going to get a good top speed, because right now, Everything else is working as previous, and we're increasing that top speed. Our generator, of course, is keeping up, luckily. So now it just comes down to that power being put onto the rails. But it's increasing steadily. It's past that 50 mark, so that's good at least. Previously, we are at 81, and I thought I got it up to like 84, 85 when I left it a little bit longer. So we'll see if it can exceed... Oh, and it slipped. So the gearing is directly related to the slippage. So now what I have as my ratio and my clamp does not work with this number that is currently on ratio of gears does not work with the clamp. So it has to be adjusted. So for example, it could be such that having a lesser amount of throttle will get us to that same level. However, that's interesting because with this theory now, it implies that having this gear down there will actually let me have a smaller throttle on these engines or on these motors because now the gearbox is putting a different power. So what I'm going to do now is back to that original trial that we did in the previous video or in another video where I have directly linked to my throttle these motors. And with that, um, make sure not to press Control S. There we go. Link to that and that. So now we have direct power going into those uh, wheels. And now if I spawn on the trailer, or car and give this power we'll see because now it's slipping obviously so I have to find that number where it's not slipping but it's quite interesting because it seems that after some time it starts to slip and then I have to actually lower it so right now we're at 51 and I will turn on Infinite Electric, as we did previously, so you can see, Infinite Electric, it's not working. Previously we are at 39, so we're still actually even slipping at 39. Let's try 38. So it is a bit of a fine balance, 
and I want to see if I can get it up to that 80, 80 or so kilometers an hour. If I can do that, then we can actually have our generator tuned to that number. So we're steadily increasing, even though we're at a less throttle on our motors. Okay, well, we're up to 84. That's good. Let's see if we can get a little higher than that, even. Now, if I change this, well, in theory, yeah, it started to slip. To really fine tune that number, I've added this keypad so I can directly control the amount of throttle down to the exact number instead of having to feather this throttle and see what happens. So now we have 0.38 on our throttle along with using those gearboxes on the wheels. And of course we're still using infinite electric because right now I'm not tuning my generator, I'm just seeing the power that I can put into the wheels without causing the wheels to slip and see what kind of top speed we can end up with. So you can see we're at 85 now and that's still using that 0.38 value and it seems to be consistent that it's allowing that which is nice. So at that point I could decide if I want to turn it up just a tad more. We are kind of turning but it seems to be steady at 85 so what I can do is start to increase this and see if we're going to get any different number here. Well, it seems to be going to 86 a little more. Let's put 38.2. Still no slippage, and now we've hit 86. So I'll definitely try to get the max power I can get out of this current setup. Oh, and we're getting a little bit of slipping of the wheels there. So keeping 382 in mind, I'm going to go back here and add these gearboxes on my actual train call it the one that my final version or working version so now the gearboxes are there both in front and back and we'll need a given power so now that they're there the next step would be to change the actual ratio of power in here so we have 382 is now our maximum power that we want to put into the wheels. So with our clamp we're doing that. And now the nice part is we can also fine tune and adjust the throttle going into the generator because previously the throttle going into the generator has a clamp of one and this is directly because we have to enable the, the motors to not deplete the battery so it's keeping up the charge in this case we have a slightly less throttle so we will see if we can slightly reduce the maximum power that will need to be going into this uh, generator without the car so nothing in tow we're getting around 115 or so kilometers an hour which is pretty good all things told um, without a load that is, call it a respectable speed that I'm happy with for a locomotive. Uh, of course, we'll see how that all works when we have actual trailers and cars and things, but for now, this seems to be working in a decent way. I noticed the number is kind of fluctuating, and I'm not sure if that's because of the clamp or if that's because of the um, limiter that I have for the speed. I'll do some digging and see if that is the case and what can be done about it. With my speed limiter disconnected, this is the type of thing that we are getting. So now it's actually getting very, very high speeds here. Obviously no load. But this is a bit too much. Oh, that's no good. I've continued testing with this setup and I found something quite disturbing and it is the fact that even with my current generator arrangement, I end up getting um, the battery starting to drain 
after a certain time it starts to overheat. A bunch of not so good things keep happening. So for that reason, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the time to revamp my engine microcontroller here. So stay tuned for that in another video. I also need to find out why on earth my uh, microcontroller is not allowing the engine to properly um, to properly put the power through the generator because right now with a five cylinder engine you, we should expect way more than the 1200 that we're currently getting i've seen other microcontrollers using a two cylinder engine three by three and getting closer to 1800 so until that's resolved there's nothing really to do here it is kind of unfortunate but i think that's what's needed to actually fully understand what's going on and do it and to avoid burnout which i'm currently experiencing due to the thing not working as intended i'm going to take a tad of a break i'm going to continue research and development on the engine and i will get back to you with more videos and more content until then see you next time and happy stormworksing everyone